In this video, I will be discussing the cold section of the GE CJ610 turbojet engine. The cold section is at the front half of the engine, and it's made up of the inlet and the compressor, which are in the area right here. So I'll be going back to some other pictures that I have where, I can, where you can see this in more detail. A few items uh, of note right now. This engine is a turbojet engine. That means it does not have any bypass air. It purely uses the exhaust uh, to produce thrust. And it uses a axial flow uh, compressor as part of the cold section. Moving to the inlet area. You can see from this angle, we can see where air actually enters the engine. And various parts of this, uh, at the very front, the item labeled A is the nose cone. It's also a bearing cover. This is where the front bearing of the main shaft is. Around the side of it, you can see it's got a row of holes. And a little bit later, we'll talk about anti ice, but uh, this engine is anti iced using this ring air travels through this ring around the outside and after entering the ring through the through the valve at the bottom which is covered but right here the anti-ice valve is down here in the lower right corner that allows bleed air or warm air from the compressor into this ring and then it travels through the ring and then through the inlet guide vanes labeled b right here and it warms those up and then the air has to go somewhere so then it comes out the holes and gets pulled into the engine. So I did just mention that on this engine it does have inlet guide vanes. Uh, these are labeled B in this diagram. It also has variable inlet guide vanes. So the front half of the guide vanes are fixed. The back half is able to change angle, which adjusts the angle that the air is entering the first stage of the compressor, which you can just see behind them right here. And those are to help, they help with efficiency of the engine. They also can help prevent compressor stalls of the engine in order to make sure that the air going into that first stage of compressor blades is at a proper angle of attack and doesn't stall out. Now, on this engine, there would normally be an inlet as well that would be attached to this flange that would stick out to the left. And that inlet would, uh, would help to direct air into the engine. And right now, we don't have one on this engine. It's been removed. <clears throat> the next area I'm going to move to is a little bit further back and looking at the compressor itself. And so in this picture, we have a compressor that's been opened up and it shows quite a few features. So a couple of the things we talked about already here is that anti-ice valve again. That directs bleed air. This duct portion right here would connect to a port on the side of the compressor. The front of it connects to that anti-ice ring and that can turn on air flowing to that anti-ice ring. There is a second bleed valve, this big yellow square down here labeled G and that is used to bleed excess pressure off the compressor to compre prevent compressor stalls. So in this engine, it's purely used for, compre for preventing compressor stalls and compressor surges. On larger uh, turbojet, and today most engines are turbofan, we have the ability to bleed air off of the compressor as well and use it for airframe uses. So things like pressurization of the fuselage, heating the leading edges for anti-ice, running air conditioning and heat systems for the, for the cabin. Uh, and this engine isn't big enough to have those. So in this case, that's just a bleed valve to reduce excess pressure, particularly if the engine is in a state where it's slowing down and you don't want pressure at the back of the compressor to try to push forward into the front. And so this is controlled by the bleed valve actuator down here labeled E. So there are two bleed systems on this engine, but none of them actually attach to what's called airframe bleed. Now, 
a lot of students get confused. This is the cold section, but just understand when air is compressed, uh, as the pressure is increased, the temperature goes up as well. And so by the time the air reaches the back of the compressor back here, it's typically somewhere between four and 500 degrees. And so that's plenty hot for producing heat for the airframe. That's plenty hot for providing anti-ice. And so that's why we're able to use bleed air for that, even though it hasn't gone through the combustion process yet. And we wouldn't want to use bleed air. We wouldn't want to use combustion, the result of the combustion process for uh, other things on the airframe, because at that point it would contain exhaust gases like carbon monoxide. So that's our bleed system. The compressor itself on this engine is an axial flow. It's made up of uh, eight stages. And remember, each stage has a rotating section. So the first stage is H right here, and that rotates, followed by a stationary section. We can't really see the stationary section, but it's the letter K between the first and second stage uh, compressor blades. So these are the compressor blades or rotor blades. And then K, the between them, are the guide vanes or the stators. So there's rotors, stators, or guide vanes uh, are also another name for stationary. And so those would be in these areas between each set of rotating blades. So you can see some of them up here on this piece from the top that's been removed uh, where the stators are still in place. Others we've, we've removed from that upper piece uh, because it didn't fit together very well. They got bent up or that kind of thing. So this being an axial flow, these two stages work together. So the, the rotating stage, the blades, H, or the second stage, the third stage, the fourth stage, fifth stage, sixth stage, seventh stage, and eighth stage rotor blades, those all accelerate the air, and they accelerate the air rearward. So they add energy to the air. It's a form of kinetic energy by increasing the velocity. But we're not interested in increasing velocity. We're, increasing, we're interested in increasing pressure. So to do that, as that air is sent rearward into the stationary stages, such as these up here, or these that you can kind of see down here, those form divergent ducts. They get, their, their, they get slightly wider at the back of them. And those divergent ducts, they cause the air to slow down and at the same time, increase pressure. So it's converting that kinetic energy, that kinetic velocity energy into a potential pressure. And so each stage raises that pressure just a little bit. So the example that was done in lab was uh, each stage raises the pressure by 1.2. So you'd have it would be multiplied times 1.2 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 times 1.2. Or uh, that comes out to, you know, let me write a note outside the picture. So uh, 1.2 to the, remember there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stages. So 1.2 to the eighth. If I punch that in a calculator, 1.2 to the eighth. Oops, I don't have. Is, in this case, would be a, a pressure ratio of 4.3, 4 4.3 to one. If we had a, a type where there were different, either different types of stages or different pressurized per stage, then we would have to multiply those together. Let me get rid of my drawings here. <clears throat> Once air has gone through the compressor, the final part it goes into is there's a final set of veins, which are the veins for the last stage. You can see them here. And these are going to, uh, they're going to start to route the air to get ready to go into the hot section, which begins with the combustion chamber uh, to the right on the right side of the image. And I'll do that in a separate video.